Welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to compare machine learning modules. We are going to look at the different machine learning modules that are there. We will compare the different machine learning models. The first one which will be logistic regression and then the second model which is going to be the KNN uh, which means it's the K nearest neighbor and then we will also look at the SVM SVM which is support support vector machines then we will also look at the naive the naive base okay which is the Gaussian, Gaussian naive base okay then we will also look at the comparison we have already under decision trees decision trees which we can also look at it then we can also look at random forest and also look at random forest so these are the different uh, comparison of the models that we want to look at it we want to look at the performance of this model in terms of accuracy and in terms of performance so we want to see which mo which model is more accurate or performs very well then we will also summarize it uh, with the last one which is going to be the confusion matrix the confusion matrices so these are the different uh, machine learning models that I want to cover in this episode I know the the discussion is going to be lengthy but please make sure that you follow along I'll try to explain each, each code line by line and let's dive into the uh, practical bit of it remember I would already given you the data set this data set heart disease.csv this is the data set that we will continue working with it throughout our series first we need to learn how to import uh, our data set which is something that we have already done before it shouldn't be something which is very difficult we will just import our data set and then proceed right away but before you pro we will go with the data set uh, loading and reading there are libraries that I need you to always put I've already talked about some of this library I'm not going to uh, consume a lot of time here I just want us because we already have it somewhere and we could reuse some of this code so let's uh, begin by uh, import uh, libraries you've already worked with this library so these are the libraries which are there you will import numpy which is uh, as np for linear algebra pandas for data processing or manipulation uh, matplotlib for plotting and data visualization Seabones and uh, CN which is a statistical data visualization and then we can also import the machine learning regression which is going to be the logistic regression from the linear model these are the different modules that we looked at in the, our previous lesson then you can control the display of your background of your uh, visualization of the of the data if you want so I'm using this uh, kind of gray uh, code you could check it out and then I want it to ignore the warnings now let's start doing the work I'll explain all this but this are part which we already covered so let's begin by uh, loading this part I will not waste time because you already know something about it read uh, the uh, read the data set now to read our data set we just do df uh, pd dot read under then you put the file name which is going to be basically heart underscore disease csv 
we don't want it uh, to pick any heading for now we'll just do um, df dot head so the mod the um, this head method will return the first five head so when we load this data set we'll see the first five which environment are you uh, selecting select the kernel so you pick uh, Python 3.10.6 then you load now it's saying that uh, we, we, we're trying to see if DF okay it's just trying to show us some small uh, error here which it's something that can be fixed maybe if you have not written the spelling correctly but we can check it out and have it fixed so what's the error all about pd is not defined okay because we did not load this we need first to load this to import the data for manipulation when you don't load this then definitely uh pandas will not be able to process your data now we can now go ahead and load the data so this is now fine now our focus because we already dealt with this data set before i'll just want us to explain a little bit um, more about the columns of this data set okay we'll just look at the columns of this data set i've just said that this data set contains age sex cp uh, all this we could have already and worked this a little bit earlier with you so this contain uh, the summary of what is in the columns summary of the columns now we have the cp for chest pain uh trace bps resting blood pressure and so on up to the target now the target is where our data set will be normalized from where we'll have our our remember when you're creating a linear regression you need to split the data one for training and one for testing so the one for testing is the one which is going to be our target then the training is going to take the bigger percentage of the data now let's begin with our first uh part of the module that we want to look at which is going to be logistic what regression Now we will begin by looking at logistic regression. Logistic regression is a statistical method used for binary classification. The goal of the logistic regression is to predict one or two possible outcomes, either zero or one usually represented in terms of zero and one so how can we try to look at those possible outcomes based on one or more input variables so we want to use all these input variables of age uh, the one which are all of them are in terms of the numerical data remember I talked about the categorical data uh, where we have numerical uh, category uh, cut category and then ordinal data but the data which we're going to deal with is numerical, which can be used. Now let's try to show maybe to 20 uh, columns here. So to 20 columns, when you look at this data in terms of 0 and 1, you realize that, uh, okay, this part and this, this, this one's sex, uh, CP, FB, PS, Exxon, these are the data that can easily be used for what for our training and we can use target to be our our testing uh, data so this is what i wanted to show it to you so you could see them in terms of uh, zero and one or alternatively we could look at uh, we could look at this type of data uh, let's try to do a count of this type of data which are in terms of zero and one but as we discuss the logistic regression basically focus on the data 
which are in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the goal is to predict okay predict predict uh, one or more possible outcome so usually represented by zero or one represented as zero or one so this is what we're going to do first let's do a count of uh, the possible uh, column targets that are there uh, okay so let's uh, try to uh, column target so we want to know the number of zeros and one which are there in the column target so you do df dot target is the column target dot value underscore count so this will this count method will help count the values which are in where the target so when you run this cell you would see that our target contain the zero the zero are 499 the one are 526 so one is 526 zero is 499 so this is our target that that we want to test from now another thing that we can now focus on to make our analysis more important we could try to look at uh, the mean of this data let's try to get the mean uh, get the mean now to get the mean we could basically use a grouping so we can group a df group by now what do we want to group by we look at the the column for target then we try to get the mean now this will only show us the mean of all our columns okay then we will look at it in terms of the grouping which is going to be in terms of uh, the column so you could see these are for all this other data that we are going to use so we get the mean for I would call it mean for uh, our training training uh, training training data okay that is well uh, well represented now I want us to move a little bit and then uh, look at one more thing which I feel it's going to be important uh, I've already tried to uh, look at that focus but we could look at this in terms of maybe let's try to have uh, those ones with heart diseases versus uh, we could create a scatter plot which is not basically ne needed right now but we can just try to do that so let's uh, create a scatter plot for heart diseases heart disease versus age and and maximum maximum at rate we could write this by first uh, say plt which is for for plotting we've imported that module from the matplotlib then scatter now the scatter method we can pass in our parameter x we haven't defined 
uh, our parameters. But uh, we would just say x. Then in our data frame, x equal to df in our data frame age. Now what are we looking at from age? We're looking at df to target. Now in the target column, we want to say target column is equals to equals to one. We want to see our uh, one is those with add diseases. Zero is those without add diseases. So that's why we'll use that one. Then this one we can we can just proceed and try to make it then the y of it will be the one of data frame which is a df uh we want to look at this other column uh the talak column and then we're going to focus on df dot from our target equals to equals to one then we can now focus and look at the color the c which is going to be for color now i've read the uh, use this color code before so if you use it you will get something yellow yellowish in color ff d 700 that's the color code and then you can also use another color code uh, which is going to be in the next data so we can do label So we want to label that color code to be to be with what disease. So this basically just shows us that this particular uh, color code contains the disease. Now we can copy this code and we reuse the code, but we just change the parameter here. This time round, we will look at the one without diseases, which is going to be zero, and then we the color code we can change it so that it can contain another color code, which is going to be like a kind of green a d f f two f. It's going to be green. So here we can say not not this is this is just a label don't worry about the parameter so much but you would see it when we do our visualization now for every visualization you need to add a legend add a legend now we do p l t legend using the legend and then which legends are we going to add uh, let's add the uh, add labels to the axis. Okay. Now the axis, which is going to be basically uh, the x-axis. Okay. Now with the x-axis, we could do plt dot x label then what do we want it to show we want it just we want it to display edge in the x axis and then plt dot y label which we want it to be the y label is going to be maximum at rate maximum at rate now remember i also say that it's important to put a title 
okay uh set the title now in the title of the plot we can just say plt dot title now what title do we want we could just say heart disease versus age and maximum at rate okay now to display just show the plot you do plt dot show now when you run this code it's saying that the other code is not a valid code this code here for this code FFD700 uh, is not a valid code Okay. So it's not a valid code because we did not put the hash. All these codes begin with the hash. When you run, you could see the changes. So those are things that are easy to fix. So we did not put the hash. Remember to put the hash. So that's how we could get to the what? Uh, to this scatter plotter. But you could sometimes try to draw to plot to see the kind of correlation in this scatter plotter. But that's not what we are going to do now because our focus today is quite different on this data set. Our focus is basically to, to use the machine learning modules that we have talked about. And we are beginning with uh, the machine learning modules to help us create uh, create uh basically let's first work with the machine learning models to look at the accuracy of the of these modules dealing with this data set but from the scatter plotter it can give us an hint those with heart disease those without heart disease how can our model test for the accuracy of this that's what we want to focus on so with the logistic we're going to begin uh uh just basically uh create a logistic logistic regression now for us to create a logistic regression it is important to solve you know very well that uh, lo logistic regression helps in solving uh, help to solve uh, problems with classification and classification so in this way we could also look at its uh, importance uh, we need first to create create the independent variable and dependent variable so the dependent variable is going to be uh the the y the x is normally our in the x is normal our dependent variables that we have so let's write this simple code first uh to create the logistic module to do that we would say our y which is basically going to be our training data set which is going to be the independent variable to df dot target 
dot values okay the value is just to uh, deal with the values which are in that column for target then the x underscore we could have data because this x data uh, drop df dot drop the drop is basically to help us uh, normalize our data in the target category so the pass in the in the parameters of drop method you can pass in uh, the column for target now what are we looking at we are also looking at the axis which that axis is just only one axis that we are going to focus on for our for it to normalize the data now once it normalizes the data and you run this you realize that uh, when you over over it you see there is that breakpoint here okay but I don't want to create that breakpoint now in the next line of code yeah we could also improve it the normalization by the, by normalize uh, the data by just uh, making it to have the minimum and the uh, and the maximum so which we could do X to be uh, literally you won't see the changes right now but I'll show you how the changes can be which could be X equals to our passing the parameter in the X data minus NP dot MIN which is for the minimum value into our X data then we're going to divide this with N P max of data then minus np of minimum now when we run this you won't see the change but it is going to help us when dealing with our data now the first step that i talked about uh, is when you're creating any data you need to reserve some bit of the data for training and some bit of the data for testing um, now the bigger percentage of the data will be for training and then the smaller percentage of data will be for testing we can split the data of course we have covered this somewhere split the data 80 uh, 80 percent for training and 20 percent for testing now what you're going to do is first before even you start splitting the data you need first to store the different variables of your data now to store the different variables of your data you need to focus on one thing let's try to deal with it in this approach we are just going to store the data we know x train X train is for our is going to be for our training then the X test then X train X test our Y train Y test and now our Y test all these variables to be equivalent to train test split which is one of the modules we import imported for splitting the data into training and testing now in the train test module we're just going to pass in the parameter for x and y now the x and y we would get the test size of our data which is going to be uh, 0 0.2 according to the data that we 
because the 20% you need to convert it which is going to be 0 0.2 then you do the random the random state to 0 now the importance of the random state is for reproducibility of our modules that we need to use now when you run this uh, you realize one thing that when we say train test split we've opened and you have not closed it okay there's just this one we open it twice so that could solve fix that problem run no error still we're moving well now from this point here is where we already created uh we have done the splitting of our data now we're going to do transpose uh, matrices the transpose is basically to uh, transpose our x train and x test modules so let's do the transpose matrix i've already explained this earlier so the transpose is basically for transposing our transpose uh, matrices so we'll have x underscore train to x underscore then dot t the t will be for transpose then we can also do it for y train dot t then x test dot t and y train dot transpose so our next line of code which is going to be uh we will now focus on the logistic regression i told you like when you have run this code from up you could basically now try to look at the accuracy of the logistic model so here what we imported we are, it's important we just want to uh determine uh just to get the the accuracy using the logistic regression but of course it's going to be the logistic regression classifier but let's first do it with the lo logistic regression which is going to basically give us the accuracy the test accuracy here uh get the accuracy using the logistic regression get getting the test accuracy now for us to get the test accuracy it's it's a very simple thing that we need to uh keep following in our in our code in order not to mess up in anything that we will be doing okay so let's let's try to implement that with the test accuracy so for log logistic we will say accuracy the variable accuracy the variable accuracy will pass it to an empty dictionary now the empty dictionary will help us to get the x train and then y train and test so let's do the lr lr variable here will be for our logistic regression equals to logistic regression when you do a method of logistic regression from what we imported this logistic regression will just get the class for all the logistic regressions and then we will also do the lr for logistic regression but each and every time you do the logistic regression you need to fit your model because there's also overfitting when the model doesn't what perform uh it performs poorly so we can now get here the x uh, train can get the x train 
and the white train white train so the x train if you're fitting it would use the transpose uh the transpose matrix of our data so we use the dot t dot t in the parameters now this is just for fitting our model now to get the accuracies just do accuracies then we will get uh we'll just get the accuracy could just get it from the list to get the logistic regression and then to get us basically our scc which is going to be for accuracy then let's abbreviate it okay now we abbreviated it here but we will we will we'll try to define that uh it's defined but we we'll try to reuse it somewhere okay so let's see how we can implement that so we want it to when we do a print output to two this to two floating points we should be able to get the accuracy score okay now let's try to get the output um get output to output anything in python you can use the print method uh the print method which you can pass in the variable okay here basically we want the text uh when you put it in quotes we will get the test accuracy to give us the accuracy but uh what we need to do when you have the test accuracy because we want the test accuracy then uh could create some dictionary to get the test accuracy to two floating to to, to two floating or two decimal places which is just two float and then uh you could use the the percentage symbol now to to just show the percentage after the floating points now here we could just use the format could use uh dot format to just get the accuracy which is complaining which is not defined and yeah we close the bracket and we close again now we still have that problem of accuracy not defined. Now let's try to define our accuracy here. Our accuracy could be get us this time round the logistic regression score. Now the logistic regression score is going to be of our y test. This is where the actual calculation takes place. So the y test dot the one of the dot transpose then uh, the white test then y no the white test dot t transpose then the y in this parameter it's going to be y underscore test dot transpose now we will multiply it times 
a hundred. Okay, so this solved that problem. So when you run this, this should just return for us the accuracy in our output because it will call uh, the accuracy variable. So let's run. Now we have some error here of uh, getting our score. Because we have decided to use both y, y, but it should have been the x test and the y test. So this formula can definitely give us the accuracy calculation. Correct. So that is already fixed. You could try that and sometimes if you run into error, you can always debug that. So we have the our accuracy test, which is our model. Our model test is 72.68. 72.68 using the logistic regression. Now we need to try it with the K nearest neighbor, the KNN classifier. So let me try to show you how you can try it with the KNN. So this second uh, part, we will try to we we'll try to basically uh, first we need to check if we have uh, now you realize here we do not have the module for we do not have the module for uh, the K neighbors classifier. So it's important we import them. Okay. The library for K neighbor. So first import the K nearest neighbor k n n classifiers okay to get uh basically to get uh accuracy accuracy score of the k nearest neighbor algorithm okay so what we're going to do is first to import from the sklearn sklearn uh, then dot neighbor then import k k neighbors yeah k neighbor classifier that is the model that you need then from there we can create a variable for knn to then we get the knn classifier uh class then we will also need to do the fitting k n n dot fit like we did with the the logistic regression don't forget to pass in the variable for x train because we first train the data x train dot t and y train because we're basically doing the training so it's going to be y y train dot transpose now 
we need to create our variables to do the calculation. That means it's going to do a prediction. Prediction dot KNN. Uh, it's going to be KNN predict. In the predict, we shall pass in only the test dot transpose. Now, to get the output display get output display we could basically do a print which is a normal thing then inside the print we pass in the parameter let's say we have a parameter for a empty Then you can do NN, which is just nearest neighbor score. Remember, this is not yet the maximum score. We just first want to get the nearest neighbor score. Then we could, inside the dictionary, we could just do it to two uh, floating points. Just do two f, f and then. We put the percentage symbol because we wanted to show it in percentage. Then we do uh, we do a dot and we format format. Then two k n n dot score. And then the score method can take in the parameter for x test transpose and y test dot transpose. Now, what we could do here is basically since we have done the format uh, we could we could try to get the calculations times a hundred okay now when you try to run this print uh, we get print format uh, classifier missing so we can check this out if we have our format classifier written very well this doesn't make any change but uh, we could just check here and see um, to have uh, dot format to KNNN uh, score uh, X test Y test to that okay looks like uh, the format classifier is not there so how, how, how can you fix that we just need to go to our KNN and then pass in the classifier which is going to be N neighbor uh, two now let's run one more time format specifier missing now it's in the last line of code Okay, how are we going to get this to get our display? Because we wanted it this basically to get us to the end neighbor means for 
Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, missing precision. Okay. So it's basically missing the precision which we we need to get to get it working. So so print format x train x test Okay. How are we going to get this solved briefly? Uh, this code here. missing precision so let's see how we can rewrite this so basically um the precision is now right so it can get for us the nn score print So it's, it's just print and score. So it gives us the accuracy of the score of which you could say uh, that is not yet the maximum score. Let's try to get the maximum KNN score. Let's try to get the maximum KNN score. So how are we going to get the maximum KNN score? So we want to get the maximum KN score for the module. So we will do score Remember to always um, write your code using the snake case. So score underscore list, then an empty list there. Then for i in range, what's going to be the length, the range? It's going to be 1 to 20. Then we will get the KNN of because let's because we already have the KNN can make this to be two KNN. Then uh, we could do yeah following the other can just get the K neighbor classifier. Then we just do the n neighbor to to i. Basically, to get we could use this. Get the n means, okay. Then we could do the K N N two. Then we try to fit the model, which we can use this. 
which is going to be x train x test basically uh, we have a problem here we can fix this now we can get from our score list then append append our knn2 okay let's just not use the fit let's append the kn2 score then we get basically the x train in the parameter x train x test transpose then what we can do right now is uh, you can basically try to get the sc then we could even plot let's plot the plot line let's plot the line line let's get a, a line plot show using line plot okay so to show using the line plot we're just going to use plt then dot plot our range the range is 1 to 20 then we could get the score list not the type just score list that should be enough to get for us the plotting then we could plt dot x ticks then the ticks are going to be basically a range a range into 1 2 1 okay uh it looks to be a little bit uh not because we are not using numpy to so if you use numpy.np the arrange method would definitely work just here we have double quotes okay so that is okay now maybe a little explanation on why i'm using this so this is basically going to plot the scores in the list and then print the maximum score of the knn that is what basically that line of code will try to get for us okay now we could now go further and do the plt remember this just to create what can be stored so create plt dot uh let's try to get the labels on x x label the x label can be the k value and then the y label can be the score then to show of course you now know it i don't need to repeat this just plt dot 
the title which is just going to be a uh, maximum but you have to put it in quotes maximum knn score then plt dot show just to show us the graph we also need to um uh get 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 maximum knn score in percentage in percentage now what we just do to get the accuracy accuracy equals to max then score list times 100 then you could get the accuracies so the accuracies can be k n n in the list to ac then let's get the print the print for output which is going to be maximum k n n score is then we create a dictionary to get to 2f then format to ac okay so that is it when you run this line of code uh, it will generate for us this graph sorry it was slow but now it is so this is the line graph which shows the maximum score so literally uh, we are able to plot the score list and then we are able to print the maximum score of the KNN model. So this is the maximum score. It is the title. What did I write? Maximum. 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 KNN score. Maximum KNN score model so that is the maximum KNN score model now these were the K values and we were able to get this so the maximum KNN score value is 100 we didn't put it in percentage so we could just fix the percentage symbol here to show us the maximum score in percentage so now the maximum score to DEF is hundred which is a good thing shows that KNN is performing better than the logistic regression which you see when you try to get the KNN without getting the maximum score it was 95.12 now the logistic regression is 72.68 so the KNN model is performing very well in this case now let's move to the next model now in the next model we'll try to use the SVM okay now for the SVM which is the support vector machine we'll also try to see if we have the SVM now this time round we are going to get accuracy we are going to get a uh, test accuracy uh, 
using the support using the support vector machine SVM algorithm now what we're going to do we need first to import the module for SVM from sklearn sklearn dot for SVM you just write SVM import import SVC which is support vector classifier now the SVM variable will store SVM will store the SV of a random state to allow reproducibility we talked about it so it should be a uh, easy thing now then could just try to make it always some space there then you can also get the SVM to fit always have to fit the model to X underscore train no test no it's train x underscore train dot transpose t then y to train then oops then we can also uh, get the accuracy to get the calculation of the SVM which is just going to be SVM support vector machine dot score x train um, times 100 then the accuracy just want to get the accuracy from the list of the KNN oops this time round we are on SVC SVM I mean support vector machine to SCC so this variable will start this to get the calculation now for the accuracy what you can do we could just get the print just to display to show us the accuracy so which is going to be test accuracy of svm algorithm dictionary then to two floating points percentage then we can format and close the bracket okay let's run so we have the test accuracy of Oops. We have the test accuracy of the our of the SVM, which is the support vector machine, which is funny that here it's performing at what? At seventy point two four. Always uh, the support vector machine algorithm does not always perform very well. Let me be run it one more time and see if it will this time change the performance. The performance doesn't change. Okay. Now, we can now go ahead and look at the knife base algorithm. So we get accuracy using the naive base 
algorithm. So how can we do that? So we will need first to import the, mo the module from sklearn dot dot naive base then import the the Gaussian naive base so that is the model that you need so when you use NB to represent NB just be the variable to represent naive base to store to store basically we will use it to uh, to store the accuracy of the SVM uh, okay so uh, we will just do uh, no of the N of the N B so we will just basically write the NB which is going to be the guy guys on NB for storing then we need to do NB which is knife base then do fit so So we'll just basically try to evaluate the Gaisson model onto the test data. But let's first do the X train. So X train dot T just for fitting. X train Y train dot T. Then we could get the accuracy from the dictionary. So the accuracy uh, which is basically going to be nb dot score. Now in the nb dot score we basically going to do the testing okay so we'll just do a test and white test times a hundred then we could get the accuracies Of which this accuracies just towards the guys on naive model uh, model dictionary so let's get that clearly on naive base uh, accuracy Ac. now what you would do here is now to get our output so we just do the print uh, accuracy of naive base then from the dictionary to get it to two floats and use the percentage sign then we do dot format accuracy then you close the bracket one more time so run this we get the accuracy of knife base which is 85.37 percent in terms of the performance it's not performing well compared to the other models that we have looked at now we could also go and look at uh, the model using the de decision trees. Let's look at the model using what? G 
get accuracy using decision tree decision tree module to get the accuracy of course with the decision tree if you do not have the SK land for decision tree you need to get but you use the decision tree what classifier so if you do this you would get it wrong just SK land decision oh you just need to do um, sklearn dot tree import decision tree classifier then the variable can just be dtc which is decision tree classifier to get the variable for decision tree now this will import from the decision tree classifier will get the class for decision tree classifier now each and every time you you need to fit your model which is going to be decision tree uh, classifier dot fit then the fit will contain the x train dot t and then the y train dot t then we can now try to also get the accuracy we have done it a number of times so this should be much easier for for you now uh, equals to the dct score so we want to get the score which is going to be basically the x test dot t close times 100 accuracy Then just basically say decision tree arc for accuracy. Then we could print, then pass in the parameter for just to give us the decision tree text then to two in the dictionary to f to two floats percentage now in that parameter you dot format to accuracy one two now when you run this you would get the output of the decision tree decision tree also gives us a hundred percent accuracy now let's look at one last model and then we can now use the bar plot using the C bones to visualize and see the accuracy now we could also do that using a uh, random Uh, get accuracy of random forest algorithm random forest classifier classification algorithm so let's see you also need to get the module from sklearn dot ensemble okay 
import a random forest classifier then you come with the rf which is the random forest which will be random forest classifier then to the n estimator of 1000 then the random state to one now i'm going to try to explain but it's easier we're just getting a variable to store the random forest cars fire the the only thing maybe i need to explain there is the uh, um i need to explain only the estimator which basically takes the parameter of 1000 so the random forest classifier will will be set will set the estimator to a parameter of 1000 and maybe basically why i use this is to create the instance of the random forest classifier then we could now proceed and write our next line of code so the error fit which is normally the random forest dot fit say that fit our model to x train dot t and y train So the arc to be the RF dot score, which we've done it before, which is just going to be X test times 100. Now the accuracy, we have done this before. Uh, to random forest classification okay we could just change it like this random forest al algorithm accuracy score okay let's try to i think uh, just made it in the wrong way it's just supposed to be random forest Ac for accuracy then we can now uh, get our print which is going to be random forest algorithm random forest algorithm accuracy score so to, uh, put it before okay mm. two dot dot two f to two floats So dot format arc. Okay, let's run this. 
So the random forest algorithm accuracy is also 100. So we have 100 for random forest algorithm accuracy. We have... Uh, so we've been using uh, this basically to help us get the accuracies. We'll try to use this in our next line of code when we are plotting. Just for labeling. Uh, that's why we try to use this. Okay, let's now try to visualize our graph. So the random forest is 100. Dishon 3 is 100. It is the Gaussian knife base, which is 85.37. The support vector is 70.24. KNN is 100. And then and then the yeah we'll try to use it that to get the accuracy of these modules so let's see what we can do uh with our next line of code here so we are bas basically going to what uh compare the models accuracies using the bar plot from sns which is the seaborn so it's going to be easier first we need just pick uh colors that we want to display i already have some pre colors that i can pick i don't want bright colors so always use the hash so the first color I want to use is going to be 00, 0 8 8 BB The next color I want to use is going to be 22 2, 2, 2. Uh, 8 B22. The next color I want to use is uh, 5 F 9 E A0. And the next, the last color I want to use is O F B B A E. That is it. Those are the colors I want to use. I want to use about eh hey, I even have less. I need because looks like we have about uh logistic regression KNN SVM so we need more two. One two could okay, let me get more colors. So the next color can be we have the eight. We have the eight. okay let's get another color the D A A five two zero then the last color which could be the C F C six zero E. Yeah, just close the quote here. So these are the colors that I want us to use. Could write red, blue, but I don't like those. So I hope these colors are good. We will see it. So we can now say CNN, C S, I mean SNN. Um, dot set style which is going to be a white a white grid that is it 
in that parameter just need a white grid then the plt dot figure we want to control the figure size then we pass in the parameter for figure size which is basically going to be um, 16 and and 10 let's do 16 and 5 oh we do 14 and 5 then we can also get the plt dot y thick to np for numpy to arrange 0 100 and 10 so 100 is basically to get the score to 100 okay then we also going to do the the plt for plotting dot the label which is going to be the y label it's just going to be accuracy accuracy in percentage then we're also going to get the plt dot x label which is going to be the algorithm ml algorithm lm model al algorithm okay we miss one which is the plt dot title to give us the title which is just basically compare this could even be our title Be sure to put it in a okay. Then the SNN dot bar plot X. We pass in the parameter for plotting the bar plot and list accuracy which is supposed to get for us all the accuracy dot key then y list y list accuracy dot value then plate for color to colors okay so when we do plt dot show this should basically show us a bar a bar plot for all this model accuracy let's run it and see Okay. Okay. 
Okay, we have one invalid color that we have. This first color here is invalid. So it's going to be supposed to be like five. So the B's are three. This fix this problem. So let's run it. And let's run this. Okay, cool. This has successfully uh, worked out our modules. So we have the module, the ML modules, uh, uh, modules algorithms. So the ML modules algorithm. So we have the performance so you could see this performance in terms of percentages that we plotted so according to this you realize that uh, KNN decision tree and random forest performs better than the SVM naive base and the logistic regression so if you're going to pick any model that you are going to use for training your data you would rather go with the KNN um, decision tree and then random forest but the support vector machine kind kind of tried to be an old outdated i think most people don't like using this module when dealing with their machine learning uh, in most cases so you can see which model works best for you but you can try to compare all the three models so this is how this module works uh with the data set that we have trained it on now the last part of our training which is on the confusion matrix let me under it so that i can have it all done so with the confusion matrix, we just want to see the performance of these modules basing on uh, basing on heat maps. So we're basically not going to look at it a lot, but uh, we're just going to see uh, the performance of the model, basically just using the confusion matrices for to look at all this performance of all these modules the logistic regressions all these other modules so let's let's write that code to get all these modules for the confusion matrix of course i've not explained the confusion matrix to you but uh, briefly what the confusion matrix does i know you could just go and read more about it to help enlighten you me basically i just wanted to do this practically with you but uh just for you to know uh ml confusion matrix so it's basically just a table that uh, evaluates this basically just uh evaluates uh evaluate the performances the performance of a classification of a classification model so uh, basically about the confusion mat matrix just to let you understand more the confusion matrix is just to view the model prediction by comparing the predicted class to the actual class in the test data set. The confusion matrix is actually useful, especially if you look at the imbalanced data sets where you want to, where one class may dominate the other class. So you will end up getting the true positive, uh, the true positive. So to save a little bit of time, uh, the confusion matrix tends to handle this. Because my recording is a little bit longer, I'll just give you this uh, text. You read more about it. So it does more on the true positive, the number of instances correctly predicted then also gets 
class correctly uh, positive correctly classified as positive class then true negative instances are predicted as classified and then the false negative predicted as classified so this is what they conf the breakdown so it will just get the actual positive and the actual negative of true positive and false negative predicted negative which will be the false negative and then the true positive for true positive and then the false positive for true negative so basically this is what the uh, the true negatives tn the false positive so we're going to look at this algorithm in terms of their predictions but they are normally use uh, using the f1 scores specificity the rock curve which is the receiver also being used under the receiver and then uh, the receiver operating class characteristics so you find a lot of the confusion matrices being used uh, in this in this area so the rock which is rock curve the receiver operating characteristic and then the area under the curve the AUC which is area under the curve so it's area under the curve that's the AUC but let's just try to look at the confusion uh, matrices in this particular case because the confusion matrices just allows us to understand how well the model is performing and identify specific areas of improve, improvement especially when it comes to dealing with imbalanced data sets or when different types of errors have different costs or consequences those are the areas where we apply confusion matrix in so let's look at this confusion matrix uh, with our M name, with our ML. Okay. So, um, mm, get confusion matrices to look at the imbalance data set okay so first we will get the predicted values the predicted values now our predicted values are the y The y head for LR, which is going to be logistic regression, going to be LR dot predicted predict. Uh, what are we predicting? We're predicting in the y test. Y test dot transform. Then pretty much we're also going to look at the KNN 3 now because we have used the variable for KNN 2 which is also going to be for K K nearest classifier or N for getting the N neighbor means to let's say 3 then also to get we need to fit the n n and three uh dot fit then you can pass in the parameter for x train it's train um then y 
y train dot t then we can also get the y so we'll do this for all the other all the algorithms that we have used y train head uh, dot knn so it be knn uh, 3 uh, predict x test then you can also do the y head variable for y head so we have the lr for logistic regression we have the knn so we need also for what the support vector machine which is going to be predict it's just going to be s vm dot predict then we're going to use for knife base head underscore nb nb shit nb equals two nb predict test then uh, we're also going to do the y for head which is going to be dtc predict underscore dot test for addition tree classifier then we can also have a variable for head underscore random forest okay now that we have the predicted values here for knn SVM, NB, the LR. So we can now go ahead and make our make our confusion matrix. So we can now uh, import module for confusion. confusion matrix so which is going to be from from sklearn sklearn dot matrices import confusion import confusion matrix then you can say confusion matrix for logistic regression to be confusion matrix which is going to be y train oops supposed to be y y test and y head logistic regression so we'll do it for all others so confusion matrix for knn 
which is going to be confusion matrix for Y test add K and N. Then we use confusion matrix for for SVM then SVM then confusion matrix for knife base Y test knife base then confusion matrix for Dijon tree classifier Dijon tree classifier then confusion matrix for RF random forest classifier edge random forest classifier okay that's cool so we have already imported we have created the variable to store all these confusion matrices so the next step is now to do the plot for us to do the plotting uh, so uh, plotting for So plotting for uh, so we are going to plot uh, we are going to plot for heat map heat map using confusion matrices. So uh, how do we plot that? We could just do one at a time then later uh, replicate so which we just going to get a figure then uh, we do the subplotting so that we can get but we want to plot all of them in the same we don't want to have very many uh, heat maps just want to have only one figure for heat map so we could do that by saying plt dot um, figure then we will pass in the the figure size fig size to take 24 and 12 that's just a half of it which is okay now we want to start getting the confusion matrices in all those the size of the confusion matrices so the the plot subplot um, confusion matrix So let's get a font size. Font font size to be to be twenty four. Then uh, for the subplot. Um, this is going to be uh, for super super title which is just going to have that word confusion matrix matrices Okay, so the subplots are going to have 
Oh. Then just to adjust by itself to fit other heat maps. So the, we just pass in adjust for the uh, white space to be uh, 0 0.4 and the H space to be 0 0.4. So that's the width and the height. So what you have decided to pass here in the parameter to make them not very big, but uh, to the size of uh, the width 0 0.4, the height 0 0.4 for all the subplots that you're going to get. Okay. Now we can now start plotting. Once we get one, we can just replicate the code and then uh, just change a few things, especially for the titles. So the code is just basically going to be uh, the plot, subplot, which we want it to do uh, three by three by one in the parameters for the plotting. Then we'll do a plt uh, dot uh, a title now this title can be for log logistic logistic regression confusion matrix and we could get a font size for it probably a 12 I don't know 12 may be big but eight okay we'll try to work with this front size basing on our output if that is big let me first do like five it might be very big now then we just get the SNN dot uh, subplot no snn dot it map so it map will be now to the cm because we want it to get for logistic regression from this uh model that we plotted so it's going to be cm underscore uh lr which is on that variable then uh, annotate to to true. Then uh, annotate to true. Then the C map. The C map color to the simap color to let's pick colors we've used colors before here we could use this color here that's number four one two three four So the CMAP color can be that. Then we could use the FMT to D. Don't worry about that parameter, I'll explain it. Then the C bar to false okay. 
then annotate so let's look at the kws which is the keywords annotate the keywords equals to let's do a dictionary here to get the size The size will be 24 and close the bracket. The spelling of false okay I hope this is okay we could first sample this and see this one would be the This one is going to be the confusion matrix. Uh, this is going to be a logistic regression confusion matrix using heat map. Yeah. So Let's run this if it works. So the CML error is not defined. Okay. So this is literally how uh, uh, it's going to be, but let's first try to fix this error on the heat map still which is not defined but we have defined it here maybe you just need to run everything again so the annotate Error is the one, two, three. Okay. Let's go to the front. Okay, so the CMAP, uh, Just a key error, so we, we, we just want to fix this keyword error, which I'm sure we will fix shortly. Okay, so it's uh, SNN heat map CML. Are uh, uh, annotate to true sim up the color F FMT to D Siba to false annotate keywords size that. Okay. Why is it failing? Oh, it's not something difficult, but we, we're going to fix that. Let's just try maybe to use like a green. Okay. 
אוקיי. Let's try to redo this code. Sorry for that. Uh, okay. Let's, I'm just going to repeat everything. This is so annoying. I think I can try to recover back this code and see. Could I recover back this code and see? Okay. Okay, so let's try to, but uh, this is the code uh, for uh, plot confusion uh, matrices. Using C using heat map so we have it for uh, this is going to be heat map for for heat map for logistic regression now we could duplicate this code then then just keep changing okay so let's just have our plt dot show okay so we can now duplicate this code and so this time round we will have it for k Okay, we'll have it for K for K nearest neighbor. So for K nearest neighbor confusion matrix so k nearest neighbor is knn so we have to change this to knn 
on uh, when you run oh it's like two of them are there okay we just need to change something here briefly in the subplot to be two okay that that looks fine so let's try to let's try to get it for the support vector machine So for support vector machine confusion matrix. So this is going to go to three in this parameter for the sub three. Okay. Okay, so we have the first one here, logistic uh, regression. So you can see the true positive and true negative here. Then you can also get for the heat map for this is going to be uh four and it's going to be for naive based confusion matrix. So you have the knife base confusion matrix. Then you can also get for the fifth one, which is the decision tree. Decision tree. Decision tree classifier. So it's going to be five. Okay, so the knife base is not this. We just need to change this a bit. It's NB. Uh, then the decision tree is the DTC. Then the support vector is the SVM. Okay. Then the last one is going to be, we could check this out. Okay. Then you could now get the last one, which is going to be So the last one is going to be uh, It's going to be random forest 
confusion matrix which is going to be the last one and it's going to be 6 and it's going to be RF okay so could run this yeah so basically here you would see that the confusion matrix is able to get for us uh, the performances of these modules so you realize the one which uh, looking at the false positive or true policy positive look at this performance of these models now to summarize this i know the recording has gone too long i think probably around two hours i just want to uh, summarize and say uh, confusion matrix is just to allow you just to get I'm just going to use this uh, multi-line comment. I'm not going to type this now. Let me just give it to you here. Okay. So the confusion matrix allows allow us to determine allow us to understand how well the model is performing and identify specific areas of improvement especially when it comes to dealing with imbalanced data set or when the different types of error have different costs or consequences so this is going to be our last video or training on the machine model if you watch this video up to this point please click on the like if you have anything that you feel you have not understood please uh, comment down in the comment section i'll try to if anything that you have not understood in the comments please just leave a comment i'll try to respond to all your comments in the chat but please subscribe like make the algorithm happy by liking this video because it has taken a lot of uh, effort time to come with a complete uh comparison of these modules using machine learning so this is going to be uh, probably my, my, okay, I'll do one more video to complete, uh, I'll do one more video to complete uh, the machine learning, which are there, just in case I've not discovered and I've not covered anything, but I'll try to do one more video maybe to uh, patch up maybe the bootstrap aggregations, cross validations, and then the the, the the probably those are the only ones that are the great search on those uh, modules then also to remind you i've not covered uh, Pyth uh python uh sql how to deal with uh sql in python how to delete upload data drop data then also uh python mongodb how to insert find query delete drop collections and then the last one I've not done with the beautiful soup. Maybe I'll do some beautiful soup web scrapping uh, in one of the videos. But this I know this is the long video. But please like, subscribe. If you have any comment, finish this and then send me your work. And try to create uh, a final list for all your work in a folder for morning and afternoon. And then uh, call it recess and then submit it to the GitHub. I'm reluctant of putting this code on the GitHub because uh, you guys are going to just reproduce this code and send it back to me. But otherwise, this brings us to our journey of machine learning model on the different algorithms like logistic regressions, KNNN, the K nearest neighbor, the SVM, support vector machine, naive base, using the Gaussian naive base, and Dishon tree uh, uh, classifier. and random forest classifier okay and then the confusion matrix so this is it all uh thank you for watching this video i hope if this video has helped you 
like, share. Uh, catch you on the next episode. Bye bye. Next week, I'll be doing web development using Django and Flask. That would be the end of our research program. Bye bye.